Hello everyone. In this video we're going to learn how to use if statements to have Python turtle make decisions and how if statements can be expanded to allow our turtle to make decisions between multiple conditions. An if statement is a structure we use to tell the turtle to make decisions based on conditions in our code. We use if statements all the time in our daily lives, such as if it's quarantine, stay home, stay safe. We only complete the command of staying home if the condition that it's quarantine is true. When we give the turtle an if statement, it goes through a similar process. First, it checks the condition we gave it. If the condition is true, it performs the commands indented below. If the condition is false, it skips the indented commands and moves on to the other commands that follow. It is very simple to write if statements in our code. We just write the word if and then enter the condition we want to test followed by a colon. Indented underneath the code, we write any commands we want the turtle to complete only if the above condition is true. So how do we write conditions? In order to write a condition, we need to compare something to something else. We do this by using comparison operators. Some of operators our turtle understands look a bit different from those that we are used to, such as equal to using two equal signs and not equal to being composed of an exclamation point before an equal sign. We've used mathematical operators to change their values throughout our code, but we can use this in our comparisons as well. Most of these operators should look familiar, but there are two commands I want to bring your attention to as the exponent and the modulus operators. In Python programming language, we use a double multiplication sign to calculate the value of one number to the power of another. For example, 3 to the power 2 is equal to 9, and 2 to the power 5 is equal to 32. Also, we can use the percent symbol to get the remainder of one value divided by another. For example, if I wrote 12 modulus 2, my remainder would be 0, because 12 evenly divides into 2. Similarly, if I write 12 modulus 4, my remainder is still 0. But if I write 12 modulus 5, my remainder is 2, so that will be the value given from this expression. If I wrote 12 modulus 7, I'd be left with a value of 5, because that's my remainder. We'll use this operator in a future example to practice with it further. Let's look at this sample code. We have a variable length with a value of 200. My if statement is using the condition length is equal to 200, which is true. So the turtle will follow the commands indented below and draw a square. Once this command is complete, our turtle then moves on to the next commands where it lifts the pen up and moves forward for 200 pixels. We have now edited our code by changing the variable length to have a value of a 100. When the turtle checks the condition now, it is false because length is not equal to 200. So the turtle skips the indented commands and moves to complete the commands that follow the if statement where it lifts the pen up and moves forward for 200 pixels. Let's look at some Python Turtle programs that use if statements to complete specific challenges. This program is asking to write a code that takes the value of n from a user and then draws black and red squares one after the other n times. The results should be centered on the canvas. Now let's think of a way we can make this happen. Well, we want every other square to be black. So that means we want square 0, 2, 4, 6 and etc. to be black. What do these numbers have in common? They are all even. Well, we can use this to write a condition for our if statement. The modulus operator can help us determine if a number is even because any even number divided by 2 will have a remainder of 0. So our condition will be checking if a variable that counts the current square divided by 2 has a remainder. If the remainder is 0, it means my current square is even and therefore should be painted in black color. Let's go to the code editor to write this program. Here we have our square function. Now let's get a value for the n. After it I will call my for loop. To do so I will type for current square in range n. The value of car square is starting from 0 to n minus 1 inclusive. Let's check it. In the loop I will write only one command which will print the value of car square in each iteration of the loop. So if n is equal to 10 it will print values from 0 to 9. Now instead of print command, let's write our first condition. If current square modulus 2 will be 0, 
we must call the square function with parameters of black and 50. Now let's write the second condition. If current square modulus 2 will be 1, we must call the square function with parameters of red and 50. Let's check our code. And like you can see, everything is good. Now let's go back to our chessboard program again. Maybe you already noticed that our program works in the wrong way if we enter an odd number for the values of rows. Let's check. Let me give the values 50 for the square lines, 7 for the rows and black and red for the colors. Like you can see, our result is not what we expected. That's because our program is written only for the cases when variable rows is equal to an even number. But today we have learned if statements. So let's upgrade our program one more time. First of all, we must use a new variable car square instead of i. And now we will call our loop for rows times, not for rows divided by 2 times. Because we will call the draw row function only one time in one iteration of the loop. Now we must add one more parameter to our draw function. It will be car square. By using this parameter, our function can understand in which color must be painted the very first square in a row. Now let's go to our draw row function. Here, first of all, I will add car square parameter. Then again, I will call my for loop row times as we did previously. Now let's add conditions as we did in the previous example. Let's check our program right now for the bugs. So you can see that each row has only black squares or red ones. It means we have a problem in the draw row function. We must use car square variable to explain which color we must pick first in our row. But like you can notice, it's not enough. So we must also use i variable to fix this problem. Simply let's change condition from just car square to car square plus i. And let's have this equation in parentheses. Now let's check our program one more time. Perfect. But what if we want to draw a chessboard with 5 rows and 7 columns, or 6 rows and 4 columns? Try to solve this problem on your own. We will solve it together in the next lesson. Now let's take a look at the if-else statement. So far we have learned that if statement can be used to have the turtle make decisions. In this scenario we are checking if it is a weekday. If it is, the alarm will be set for 7 am. But what if we wanted to set the alarm for different times on the weekends? An if-else statement allows the turtle to make decisions between multiple options. In this case, if it is a weekday, the alarm will be set at 7 am, and if it's a weekend, the alarm will be set at 9 am. In Python syntax, we would write if followed by our condition, and then indent the command we want to complete when the condition is true. But if we look closer, we notice there will never be a case where it's not a weekend or not a weekday. Our choices here are really one or the other, which is where else comes in. When we write an if-else statement, we are having our turtle choose between conditions. Unlike if statements, our turtle will be forced to make a choice between the conditions given below. To force this, we use else as the final condition in our if-else block. We can have as many conditions or choices as we want. What if your alarm goes off for school every weekday at 7, on Saturdays your alarm doesn't go off until 9, and on Sundays your alarm goes off at 10? Well, we can write an if-else statement with multiple conditions, where we use the structure of if, elif, else. The turtle will have to make a decision between the conditions given to it. We can have as many conditions as we want. If you need a different alarm time for every day of the week, it's no problem, just use if for the first condition, elif for the alls in the middle, and else for the final condition. Now let's break down the different scenarios in this code. Our length variable has been set to 30. Python turtle checks the first condition, which is length is more than 15, which is true. Our turtle completes the commands indented beneath. Once these commands are completed, the turtle skips the other conditions and completes the code found below the if-else statement. In this case, our length value is set to 10. The turtle checks the first condition, length is more than 15, and finds that it is false. The turtle then moves to the next condition, the length is less than 15, which is true, so it completes the commands beneath it. Once these commands are completed, it moves to the code that follows the if-else statement. When our length value is set to 15, the turtle checks the first condition to see if the length is more than 15 and finds it false. So it moves to the next condition. 
It finds this condition false as well, so it moves to the next condition. After checking all other conditions and finding them all false, the turtle completes the command found beneath the else block and completes backward command. The syntax we use is simple, but we need to pay close attention to indentation. We start our if else statement with an if and then write the condition followed by a colon. All commands to be performed when this condition is true are indented below. We write our elif conditions in a similar manner, using the word elif and the condition and then a colon. The statement concludes with the word else followed by a colon. We don't place a condition next to the word else, because this is performed anytime the other conditions are false. Don't forget to indent the commands below. Let's take a look at using if else statement in some Python Turtle programs. In this challenge, we are asked to graphically represent if a number entered by a user is positive, negative or zero by drawing a plus sign, minus sign or circle. I started our code by drawing functions that draw plus sign, minus sign and circle using all the commands we have already learned. So let's start by asking for user input. We can write number equals int input enter a number. Once we get this value, we want to check if it's positive, negative or zero. We'll start our if statement by checking if the number is positive. So if the number is greater than zero, then we want to call our draw plus function. Next, we'll check if the number is negative. So if number is less than zero, we want to call our draw minus function. The last condition if is the number is zero, but that's the only last possibility. So all we type is else and call our draw zero function. Let's see how this code works. Let's enter 0, good, let's enter negative 10, good, and positive 5, perfect. In this lesson we learned how to use if statements to have Python turtle make decisions based on conditions. We also learned how to use if else statements to have Python turtle make decisions between multiple conditions. Use if elif else statements to solve the next set of Python turtle challenges. See you next lesson.